Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on uh, cis loop ligand gated ion channels. In this video, what we're going to do is uh, study the pore of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. Okay, so we're going to study the portion of each of the subunits of uh, the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor which actually lines the pore. So we're going to study the pore of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. So the uh, structure for this video is we're going to start by having uh, a review of the structure of the whole nicotinic acetylcholine receptor, so how it's a pentamer, uh, the different subunit compositions. We're just going to look at one. We're going to specifically look at the, um, uh, the skeletal muscle form of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. Uh, then what we'll do is we'll look at a study in which uh, we determined um, which portion of each subunit lines the pore. We're then going to look at the structure of this portion that lines the pore. Uh, we're going to look at something known as the hydrophobic patch and these uh, negative rings that line the pore. And finally, we're going to discuss open pore blockers and also we're going to discuss uh, a technique known as SCAM, which stands for Substituted Cysteine Accessibility Method, uh, in order to uh, determine which residues are lining the pore. Okay, right. So, we'll begin then with a basic overview of the structure of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. Okay, so, the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor then. If we have the plasma membrane here, so this is the phospholipid bile there, and then if we have a nicotinic acetylcholine receptor in the uh, membrane, then let's draw it here. Okay, so this represents a nicotinic acetylcholine receptor and the phospholipid bile there continues over here. Then basically there is a pore down the middle and this receptor or this channel, okay, and it's a ligand gated ion channel which is often abbreviated to LGIC, okay, um, it's made up of five proteins basically. It's not just one protein, it's made up of five proteins. So let me just draw this. It's made up of five separate proteins, like so. So it's what's known as a pentamer. Pentamer just means um, a structure made up of five constituent subunits. Okay, right. So now, let's pull out one of these proteins that makes up a fifth of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor pentamer and have a look at its membrane-spanning topology. Let's have a look at its structure. Okay, so, if we draw the membrane again here, then the actual protein that makes up a fifth of this uh, nicotinic acetylcholine receptor pentamer, its structure will look something like this. Here's the amino terminus of this protein. Then it will have the cysteine loop here. And this is why the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor is known as a cis loop ligand gated ion channel. Okay? Because the uh, subunits which make up the ligand-gated ion channel, they have this cis-loop, okay? So they are cis-loop ligand-gated ion channels. And let me just explain to you uh, what a cis-loop is. So basically, a cis-loop is just a loop in the polypeptide, like so, which is whole held together by uh, disulfide bonds between cysteines on these two opposing strands. So let me draw a bigger picture down here. Okay, so if this is our polypeptide, so this is this starting portion here, then what you'll get is you'll get a cysteine amino acid in this polypeptide. So let's show this here. So here's the alpha carbon of the cysteine um, amino acid. Okay, here's the R group of the cysteine amino acid. So it has a methylene group and then it has a thiol group on the end like that. Okay, and then the cysteine amino acid will have a carboxylic acid group here. Uh, which will then be bound to the amine group of the next amino acid along. Okay, right. And then this will loop back around, so this is the cis loop. And then maybe it will just so happen that you have another cysteine amino acid here. So here's the amino group of this cysteine amino acid. Here's the alpha carbon. Here's the methylene group again. Okay, and here's another thiol group. Okay, so I'll draw the sulfur, and it would have a hydrogen on again. However, what's going to happen is basically uh, this 
uh, cysteine R group here, this sulfur of the cysteine R group on this strand is going to bind with the sulfur of uh, the cysteine residue on this strand. So what's going to happen is you're going to take that proton off there, okay, and you're going to link those two sulfurs together. Okay, so let me colour this in to make up for the um, scribble. Okay, so this bond between the two sulfur atoms this is what's known as a disulfide bond, or a disulfide bridge, people often refer to them as. So this is a disulfide bond, or other also referred to as a disulfide bridge. So basically, the two opposing strands are held together by this disulfide bond between the two cysteine residues. This creates the loop, and since the loop is held together by cysteine amino acids, it's called a cis loop. So the reason these um, nicotinic acetylcholine receptors are called cis loop ligand gated ion channels is firstly they are a ligand gated ion channel, but also uh, the fact that each of the subunits of this pentamer has this cis loop in its structure. Okay, then what happens is the polypeptide proceeds by spanning the membrane four times, like so. Okay, and it has a important large intracellular loop here known as the M3, M4 loop, and I'll explain that name in a moment once I've told you what M3 and M4 are. Okay, and here is the carboxylic acid terminus of our protein. So each of these uh, membrane-spanning alpha helices, as they are, um, has a name. So this first membrane-spanning alpha helix is called the M1 um, membrane-spanning alpha helix. Then the second one is M2, the third one is M3, and the fourth one is M4. So this is M1 here, okay, this is M2 here, okay, this is M3 here, and this is M4 here. Okay, right, so uh, that's why this intracellular loop here is called the M3-M4 loop because it's between the M3 and the M4 membrane-spanning alpha helices. Right, okay, so that's the structure of a single uh, subunit of this uh, pentamer. But now, uh, let's have a look at how many different genes there are coding for these subunits that make up the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. Now, it would be really, really nice if there was just one gene coding for one subunit, and then you just make this gene five times, stick them all together, make into a pentamer, and that's the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. However, that's not the case. Instead, we have 17 genes in the human genome which code for uh, subunits of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. So you have 17 genes, okay, which you can use to make one of these subunits. And they will all have slightly different sequences of organic bases which have uh, which will lead to proteins with slightly different sequences of amino acids in them. Okay, so all of these 17 genes will make slightly different protein, um, protein subunits. However, they are similar enough that they will do the same role, and um, we can consider them all as protein subunits of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. Now, to help us get some sort of grasp on uh, how many genes there are, we uh, have put them into families, basically. So there is the alpha family of nicotinic acetylcholine receptor genes, uh, which has 10 members in it. So it has the alpha 1 gene, the alpha 2 gene, and then it goes all the way down to the alpha 10 gene. So all of these are separate uh, subunits of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. Okay, then we also have the beta family, which has four genes in it. So we have the beta-1 um, gene, uh, which codes for a protein subunit known as the beta-1 subunit. And that goes down, beta-2, and I might as well draw all, all four of these out now, beta-3, and then finally beta-4. Okay, so so far we've got 14 of these uh, separate nicotinic acetylcholine receptor protein subunits. And then finally, the last three aren't put into families, they're just separate genes. So we have the gamma gene, the delta gene, 
and the epsilon gene. So overall, that gives us 17 genes. We have alpha 1 through alpha 10, beta 1 through beta 4, and then finally gamma, delta, and epsilon. And these are all separate genes which code for separate uh, receptor subunits of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. So when you create a nicotinic acetylcholine receptor, you need five of these uh, subunits of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor to come together. Now the question is, how do you pick the five? Well, basically, it's a total nightmare. There are a huge number of nicotinic acetylcholine receptors that you can make and which are made within the body. However, there's only a few that actually are largely expressed in the body and are really important. And one of them is the one that I'm going to show you now, uh, which is uh, the uh, skeletal muscle nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. Okay, so the one which is on skeletal muscle cells and which allows them to respond to the acetylcholine released by alpha motor neurons. So let me just draw a little picture for this. So this is an alpha motor neuron, okay, which is going to try and make uh, the uh, skeletal muscle cell contract. So here's our alpha motor neuron. Okay, and it wants the skeletal muscle cell here to contract. So what it does is it releases acetylcholine onto it. So when the neuron fires, it's going to release the neurotransmitter acetylcholine, which I'll just abbreviate to ACH for short. And then what needs to happen is the uh, skeletal muscle cell, the myofiber here, needs to have some sort of a receptor for nicotinic, uh, for acetylcholine rather. Okay, and this is basically a ligand-gated ion channel, and it's a nicotinic, therefore a nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. So we are going to look at what is the subunit composition of this nicotinic acetylcholine receptor which you find uh, at neuromuscular junctions. Okay, and um, we'll continue this video in the, we'll continue this discussion in the next video uh, where we'll sh talk about the subunit composition of this uh, skeletal muscle nicotinic acetylcholine receptor and we'll also talk about an experiment done uh, which shows which portion of uh, these protein subunits here actually aligns the pore.